so we'll we have seen a lot about conceptual framework and we have seen a little bit about what is ifrs now we will look at like what is in detail about this ifrs here okay so ifrs standards commonly known as sorry international financial reporting standards commonly called ifrs are accounting standards issued by ifrs foundation and the iasb so there are like two bodies here these are the ones who create the accounting standards okay these accounting standards are like worldwide they could be used okay the, but uh, there is no like uh, government support for this it's a private organization which creates this ifrs standards they constitute a standardized way of describing the company's financial performance and position so that company financial statements are understandable and comparable across international boundaries so once like com companies throughout the world uh, adopt ifrs okay so if countries adopt ifrs throughout the world then the accounts prepared by a company in india and the accounts prepared by a company in south africa can be easily compared okay so that's the benefit of having ifrs they are particularly relevant for companies with shares or securities listed on a public stock exchange so mostly like listed companies are the ones who use ifrs ifrs have replaced many different national accounting standards around the world but have not replaced the separate accounting standards in the usa where us gap is still applied okay so ifrs is like adopted in so many countries but in few countries alone they are not accepted okay they are not like fully adopted so what are the advantages here why should companies and countries follow ifrs okay so the reason is a business can present its financial statements on the same basis as its foreign competitors making comparison easy so that we discussed discussed cross border listing so a company in india can list its shares in dubai okay that can be making it easier to raise capital abroad companies with foreign subsidiaries will have a common company wide accounting language okay for example a company like nestle they have like branches in around 80 countries so they can't they usually what they do is they create a uh, accounting report for india and they also create an accounting report for report in ifrs and they send the ifrs report to the parent or the head office okay because the head office will collect uh the ifrs accounting report okay so from all the 80 country 80 uh, 80 countries and its subsidiaries and all of it will come to the headquarters and headquarters have to compile it and then they create a and then they create a overall uh financial performance okay they try to find out the overall financial performance because they it is very difficult to convert a particular country's accounting uh accounting standards okay it's very difficult to to convert any accounts prepared by a particular accounting standard okay and then converting it because it's like very difficult so rather if a company follows both of it it's quite easier and what happens here is if countries are going to adopt ifrs alone okay leaving their national standard it's much more better so that's what this ifrs is all about so foreign companies which are targets for takeovers or mergers can be more easily appraised so what's the disadvantage of ifrs see one is the cost of implementing ifrs is huge because we have to learn it okay we have to then uh, uh, create our uh, create our information systems and accounting systems in terms of ifrs then we have to prepare it okay so that is a huge problem the lower level of details in ifrs so ifrs is not like very detail oriented okay it's only gives you overall summary so again when compared to many countries it's not like very detailed information okay so these are the disadvantages here so i think uh, this is what due to the increasingly global nature of investment and business operation there has been a move towards the internationalization of financial reporting okay so more and more countries are adopting ifrs this harmonization was considered necessary to provide consistent and comparable information to an increasingly global audience so i think this also we have discussed 
So what is so unique about IFRS? IFRS are not enforceable in any country. So you cannot enforce it in any country because it is a uh, it is a global standard. So countries will not accept it so quickly. They are developed by an international organization that has no international authority. To become enforceable, they must be adopted by a country's national financial reporting standard setter. So if IFRS has to be like followed mandatorily in India, it is ICAI, okay, the Chartered Accountants of India who have to approve it, who have to allow it. Within the European Union, IFRS standards were adopted for all listed entities in 2005. Okay, so all the European countries are following IFRS standards. And it is also being used in many other countries also like Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, Russia, Mexico, Saudi Arabia and even in South Africa. Okay. US, China and India are going through a process of convergence whereby they are updating their national standards over time so that they are consistent with the IFRS standards. Okay. So the differences in IFRS and in, uh, in the AS, okay, in the local accounting standards are being like uh, removed and both are like becoming very similar. So that is what is convergence refers to. So all the dark shade countries, okay, the dark shaded countries have adopted IFRS. So you can see that it's around some 80% of countries have adopted uh, IFRS as mandatorily. Okay, so companies have to prepare the accounting standards in IFRS. So there are like still many countries like China, Japan, India and US who have not adopted it. Okay, so over a period these countries are trying to uh, go for harmonization okay or convergence so we look at here at presentation of financial statements so as per ifrs whenever an annual report is submitted okay it should have all these elements put together so it should have the statement of financial position which is also called as balance sheet statement of comprehensive income or profit and loss account statement of changes in equity should be there Statement of cash flows should be there. Notes including a summary of the significant accounting policies should also be there. And the comparative information is required for the prior reporting period. Okay. So all these elements are, as a pack has to be given in the annual reports. So now we look at individually at like what is IFRS conceptual framework. So we have seen what is a conceptual framework. We've also seen what is an IFRS. We'll put both these together and we'll see IFRS conceptual framework. So one of the most important document underpinning the preparation of financial statements is the conceptual framework for financial reporting. Okay. Was prepared by the IASB. So IASB is the parent body for the creation of IFRS here. The framework presents the main ideas. Okay, so what are included in that conceptual framework is the ideas, concepts, principles upon which all the IFRS and therefore the financial statements are based. Okay, so IFRS is using the conceptual framework. The conceptual framework is the larger part. Okay, and the standards are a sub part. The framework includes the discussion of the objective of financial reporting. So what does the framework actually take into account it takes into account why should we prepare financial reporting okay what's its objective what are the qualitative characters characteristics of useful financial information what is the definition recognition measurement of the elements from which the financial statements are constructed the accruals and going concern concept okay so all these are included we will just touch whichever like important alone we will just see and we'll move on so first we look at what is the objective of the financial reporting. So what is why do we prepare financial reporting? The main objective is to provide financial information about the reporting entity to the users of financial statement that is useful in making decisions about providing resources to the entity as well as other financial decisions. Okay. So why do we need financial reporting? So assume that you get an annual report of a company from this annual report okay you should be able to decide whether you want to invest in this company's share or not okay whether you want to supply goods to this company or not 
whether to work in this company or not okay so a financial report should help you to make a decision okay with regards to being associated with the company or not okay so that is the main aim of the financial reports so in order to achieve that that there should be some kind of a quality okay qualitative characteristics which should be there so that it is like useful for the user okay so what are the qualitative characteristics that should be there so it's like useful so there are two qualities that are like required one is called as relevance okay anything which is presented in the financial reporting should be relevant okay so it should not be unnecessary things and the second one is faithful representation okay so as ifrs is not a legally enforceable rule okay the companies should come forward and they have to present the accounts in a faithful way okay they, they should not like mislead so that's a concept here so there are also some enhancing qualitative characteristics such as uh, the report should be help helpful in comparability verifiability timeliness and understandability so these things are required okay so what is relevant if the information if it has the ability to influence the economic decisions of users it is a relevant information and this information should be provided in time okay so when any information which is provided in annual report okay should meet these characteristics okay so whenever you put any information in the annual report it should be useful for people to make decisions it should also be provided in a time bound manner okay so i think this we could uh, skip okay we don't need to uh, see a lot but what is the qualities of relevance okay see relevant information is something which has a predictive value or confirmatory value for example by looking at the balance sheet and sopl okay you should have some kind of a predictive value okay for example if you see the five year sopl you can predict what would be the profit of the company in the next year okay that you can predict so that is called as predictive value confirmatory value means like assume that there's a liability okay so you have got a loan of 1 lakh okay that is a confirmation so there is a confirmatory value that the company has to pay 1 lakh of loan okay so the balance sheet and pnl should have a predictive value or confirmatory value if both are not there it is a useless information okay and about faithful representation okay faithful representation is the key word is substance over form okay what is substance over form see just because the ifrs says that you have to uh, follow a particular rule okay it doesn't mean you have to follow that if you feel that rule is not like quite useful for the company and if you feel that it would be better if you present it in a different manner then it's better you 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 submit your accounts in that different format okay for example see some companies usually present their uh, financial reports okay every 12 months every 12 month they give a annual report but what happens this some companies say that see our nature of business is so different we are not like a normal company we will file accounts only in uh, in one and a half years so 18 months they will submit their accounts okay every 18 months only they will submit their accounts is it wrong see the substance is more important than the form it's not about following the one year rule okay for some companies present accounts every uh, 12 months some companies 15 months and some companies 18 months okay whichever that is suitable for that particular company okay they can go for it that is called a substance over form but provided they have to tell why they have chosen that particular uh, method okay so that is a unique thing here okay so any information that is presented in uh, as through ifrs should be complete okay they should have the necessary description details explanation notes and everything and there should not be any bias it should not be too optimistic or too pessimistic there should not be much errors okay unknowingly there can be error but there should not be any important things should not be in error okay small things can be error but larger things should not should not be error okay 
it should be it should be helpful in comparability okay that is the company should follow the same accounting uh, rules year on year okay they should follow the same rules year on year one year they should not like follow one rule and other year they should not follow the different rule they should follow the same rule every year okay so that should be consistency and disclosure so directly we can't verify a balance sheet but at least indirectly through any formula or any technique we should be able to find it out okay but i'm not sure like how uh, it helps here okay how we can do that I, I don't know we should prepare the accounts in timeliness okay because any information given very uh, very out of context is like totally useless it should be understandable okay so that's about the qualitative characteristics of financial information so any information provided in ifrs accounting should help the user to make a proper decision so that's about ifrs so now we look at what are the key or basic elements of an uh, financial statements here so So we will see what is the definition for an asset. So an asset is a resource controlled by the entity as a result of past events from which future economic benefits are expected to flow. So any item can be considered as an asset provided it meets the definition of the asset. Okay. If anything that does not mean the, meet the, this definition okay, cannot be considered as an asset. Okay. So it should be a resource controlled by an entity. Okay. So if it's the company is not able to control it, okay, as per it is will, then it is not a resource, okay, then it is not an asset. As a result of past event, so the asset should have been purchased in the past. You cannot say that you will purchase the asset in the future and you can't like record it. From which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity. So there is, has to be some kind of a benefit from that asset that comes to your company. So if there is going to be any uh, if there's going to be no economic benefit, for example, you have a building and that building is like totally in an unuseful condition. Okay, so can you like uh, consider it as an asset? The answer is no. You can consider the land as an asset, but the building as it is like unusable and it is you are not able, you are not going to get any money out of that particular building, then the building cannot be considered as an asset. The land can be considered. Okay, so that's the definition of asset. A liability is an obligation to transfer economic benefit as a result of past transactions or events. So a liability is an obligation. So you have some kind of a, a return or a oral kind of a, a contra contract. Okay. So either you have promised something like warranty and guarantee are promised, but they are also obligation or any loan taken that is also a, is an obligation to transfer an economic benefit. So if someone claims a warranty, the company has to give the, uh, the warranty claim they have to give. If the company has got a loan, the company has to pay the uh, loan with its principal and interest as a result of past transactions or events. Okay. So a liability can be recognized only for past transactions. You can't say that in future we are going to sell 10 goods and we are going to give guarantee for that so can we like create a liability for it the answer is no okay for any products which have been sold in the past we can create it as a obligation and a liability okay any loan that we got in the past okay we could create a liability if we are going to get a loan in the future for that we cannot create a liability so what is equity this is the residual interest in a business and represents what is left when the business is wound up, all the assets sold and all the outstanding liabilities paid. It is effectively what is paid back to the owners or shareholders when the business ceases to trade. Okay, So equity is the value where all the assets are sold and all the liabilities are paid. The different amount is called as equity. Okay, And what is an income? This is the recognition of the inflow of economic benefit to the entity in a reporting period. Okay, so it is an inflow of economic benefit. So it can be, it could be something like uh, uh, any uh, sale. Okay, 
any uh, service that is being like sold okay or uh, any royalty income that we get so or any income we receive or dividend we receive everything is an economic benefit so that's about income and the last one is sale sorry expense this is the recognition of the outflow of economic benefit from an entity okay so any outflow for example any uh, purchase of a good or service of another entity can be considered as a expense okay so these are the key elements or the basic definitions based upon these definitions several definitions keep uh, can be like created for example once we know what is the definition of an asset we can create what is the definition of depreciation uh, what's the definition of intangible asset like that we can keep on creating more definitions okay once we create more and more definitions it's like quite useful to apply to each and every scenario to find out whether that particular item is meeting that definition okay so that's the power of having ifrs okay it's like very detailed procedural oriented okay but gives you the freedom to uh, 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 to uh, use the rules okay that's what we call a substance over the form so there's also some flexibility there so that's about ifrs and conceptual frameworks and gap okay thank you for watching this video we'll meet in the next video